All right. Interesting season so far here in 2036. I don't know why I'm doing an accent. It's June 1st. We're sitting at 31-20 and 20 on the season. We are one game behind the Arizona Diamondbacks. And this is this has changed quite 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 a bit. As of like two weeks ago, it was like the top five teams were all within one game of each other. And it was just a giant glob at the top of the division. But teams have started to do a bit of separating right now. Uh, if we take a look at the standings, the expanded standings here, you can see top four teams here are all pretty similar with run differential. But then, like, even I think it was either the Rockies or the Dodgers that were among the mix that was, like, all within. I think it was the Dodgers because that makes sense because they're 2-8 and eight in their last 10. So they've really started to slide here. I should also mention that the Dodgers have the number two overall pick because they were so bad last year. Uh, crazy world. But as you can see, we are eight and two in our last ten, as well are as well as the snakes, also eight and two in their last ten. Uh, but we're we're playing very well. Plus seventy one run differential, that is the best in the Pacific Division. We love to see that. The Orioles, holy smokes, minus one oh eight. <laughs> they have uh, they have fallen. They have not done well. Uh, I don't really think they've been good ever since like that initial first few seasons where they were just like on god mode winning like 100 plus games every se every single season but they they suck right now but anyways you can see the the expos are actually plus 200 how are the how are the raleigh oaks doing yeah they stink <laughs> they're not great but uh the angels plus 71 here we love to see that we're we're liking where we're at right now uh we've dealt with some injuries but we're we're fighting through them things have been going well Let's take a look at those injuries very quickly. Dan Brannick got hurt. He was pitching well, I believe. Yes, he was having a very good start to the season, and then he got hurt, but he's currently on a uh, IL assignment. He's going to come back like literally like right now once I decide who we're going to get rid of. Uh, but we might have to have a lot of lefties in our bullpen, which I'm not opposed to because a lot of our lefties are not guys that can only get out lefties. They can get out multiple different types of hitters. Uh but yeah, as far as the other injuries we have, uh, Treya Savage, unfortunately, partially tore his UCL. He's out for the year. He did not have a great five-start stint for us to start the year, but it was only five starts, very small sample size. But unfortunately, we will not be able to see what he does for us the rest of the season because he tore his UCL. If I had to imagine, he's probably going to be wrecked when he comes back from that. Not great because I believe that's his second torn UCL. Uh, third, third, yeah, so he just tore his UCL, and he's, he's already had two elbow ligament reconstructions, reconstruction surgeries, he's, he's Jared Parker, he's pulled pork, folks, so unfortunate to see that, Toronto's got seven weeks left on his injury, and then Astorga actually has had multiple injuries, I think, no, he, so he came back from that oblique strain, was in the lineup for, like, literally... Uh, he went on a rehab assignment for three games, came back one game, played very well, and then decided to get hurt. So he is on the IL with a fractured hand, currently sitting... What am I doing? Currently sitting with six to seven weeks left on the injury. So unfortunately, we haven't really gotten to see Astorga play for us, but he did play very well in that one AB he's got. <laughs> but he got 1AB, and then he, I would imagine he probably got 1AB and then probably got hit on the hand and fractured his handmaid or something like that, if I had to imagine. If if I know baseball, which I like to think I do. We've had a couple other, I think we've had a couple other injuries, and I can't really remember what they were at the moment, but as far as our pitching goes, or I should take a look at our, our team stats first. Uh, things are looking good. We're, we're, we're among the league best in a lot of things. We're the best in stolen bases. We have the most home runs, the most, uh, second most walks. We have the second most runs scored in, in the American League, which is always good to see. Fifth in war, fourth in slugging, fourth in OPS. We love to see it. We have the best ERA as a total staff, the second best bullpen ERA, the fifth best starters ERA, the second least runs allowed. So overall... The Los Angeles Angels are playing very, very good ball here. First and hits a lad, opponent's average, BABIP. We are walking a ton of guys. That's probably a lot to do with Trent Thornton, to be honest. Uh, but we are striking at the second most in the league, and we have the best defense overall in defensive efficiency and in zone rating. So 
Very, very good things all around for the Angels here. As far as the pitching goes, sort this by innings pitched. Justin Lampkin has been phenomenal here at the top of our rotation, as you would expect. Jorge Sosa has even had some solid outings here through 10 starts of his career. Or not career, 10 starts to his season. Mike Hoskins, despite him dropping to a 50 overall, is putting together a very solid season. Josh Flynn's been up and down, but it's, you know, I'm confident he'll, he'll, he'll bounce back. By the end of the year, he'll be solid. Uh, Brad Caraway has been quite good in the stopper role. You can see here very good ERA plus and fit minus through 44 and two-thirds innings as our main reliever. And since you Savage got hurt, Pimentel's in the rotation, folks. He's our number four starter. I just felt like he was our best option to put in that spot. And he's actually been quite good. You take a look at splits here. He was getting gypped a bit with the ERA in the bullpen. But he's come over to the rotation, has had five starts, and he's been quite solid, you know? Can't complain about that as a 21-year-old uh, making his first five career starts. He's been very solid. We'd love to see it. Uh, Shamar, unfortunately, has not been great. Juan Campos has been really good with the ERA, but the FIP's been kind of up and down, giving up way too many home runs. This needs to come down. Uh, Thornton's in a complete mop-up role, avoid high leverage, but he is indeed walking the farm, but he's also striking at 37.6% of batters. Uh, Spain Hauer's also walking a ton of guys, but striking at a ton. He's been solid in his role, aside from walking a ton of guys. Chris Croxton has been phenomenal. We honestly might shuffle around the order of these guys a bit because Croxton's just been, just been incredible since coming off of his injury here. Uh, great ERA plus, great fit minus. He's striking at a ton of guys. He's not walking anybody. Uh, not a ton of guys, but he's, he's he's been very, very solid, I should say. We'd love to see it. Uh, Mahoney's been up because once you Savage got hurt, Pimentel was no longer the long relief man. Now Mahoney is in that role. He's been, you know, whatever. He's in a long relief, avoid high leverage mop-up role. And as far as the bats go, we sort by war here. Chris Aquino already has a two war in the season, a 154 WRC+, plus, 13 doubles, 13 home runs. The guy's incredible. He's, he, he's the star of the team here. And Ellie De La Cruz, I mean, he may be wrecked, but he is putting together a hell of a season so far. He, I mean, it's it hasn't been slow at all like it was last year. He's already basically at last year's war total, 1.7. He's got a 130 WRC+. plus. He's got 14 home runs with 19 swipe bags to go with it. He's striking out a bunch, but it's whatever. Uh, I think he's even playing a, no, he's, he's, he's a bad shortstop at the moment, but you know, we're still the best defensive team in the American League, so it's not hurting us too much. Aiden Huzzy has actually been quite good for us this season. He is one of our better hitters. They've won 70 WRC plus for him. He's actually in the starting lineup right now. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, Tiziano got off to a very slow start, but as you can see here, he has rebounded. If we take a look at his splits, maybe not very slow. Probably like the first three weeks he was really slow, but he has really turned it on since then. A 144 WRC plus in the month of May. Juan Padilla, he's been solid. We would like to see this a bit a bit better, but, you know, overall, solid. Uh, Fetchko has been good as a bench player. Soto got off to his slow start as usual. And one thing that's, that's disappointing to see is that he's actually striking out more than he's walking, which is very odd for Juan Soto, but overall still doing Juan Soto-type things. Uh, Suzuki has been up and down, but overall, solid. Conalate continues to just not do anything, aside from play a really good center field. Steve Haggy and Cuevas have both had their moments. They've been up and down, but they're both like a little bit below league average right now. Uh, Shamel, he's the backup shortstop. He has not hit, but uh, I'd imagine he's playing a decent shortstop. Ten games, it's whatever. Very small sample size. Van Wingarden has been awful. He has actually lost his starting spot, which we will get into in a second here. Clancy went down to AAA for a bit because he was awful with Conalate. Uh, the center field situation is a problem right now. But overall, you can see here Juan Padilla is actually playing right field for us because Van Wingarden was playing so poorly and uh, Astorga got hurt. So Van Wingarden is now on the bench and Padilla is now the starting right fielder because he has so much versatility to his game. Uh, Huzzy is playing second base, 
and uh, Tiziano has now sw- switched to third base as he was at second base. Uh, so that is the infield and outfield alignment for us right now. Fetchko is playing every fifth game at second base because he's been quite good as a backup for us. Uh, he's also, you know, a bit of a sneaky pickup for us here. I think, where did we get him from? Wasn't it like Indie Ball or something? Uh, yeah, he had like an insane run with an Indie Ball team and then we picked him up. Uh, and he's actually been a, a solid uh, little player for us here. He's, got, he's a captain personality class. I like what he brings to the organization. The uh, the St. John's man. I think it's St. John's. That's what I just saw. Yeah, some St. John's. Uh, yeah, so he's our backup here. He's been solid. And uh, that's how the team's been playing. So let's just, you know, hop straight into the draft here. It is June 1st. As I said, the Dodgers have the number two overall pick. Uh, the Red Sox dropped from, from one to four. The Cubs jumped from eight to one. Orioles jumped a couple spots. And then we have the 21st overall pick, which is the highest we've picked in quite a while because we've strung together some really good seasons. Uh, but yeah, we'll take the 21st overall pick here. Start the draft. Let's uh, just sort this by potential. Uh, all players here. Number one overall pick to the Chicago Cubs is Damani Ferret Lorenzau. Very French last name at a Dixie State in Utah. Uh, looks like he could be a good pitcher. Looks like he could be a good pitcher. Let's just see who the Dodgers are taking because it's so rare that the Dodgers are taking second. And obviously they're, they're our cross-city team. Not technically, but by name. Uh, they take another pitcher, Chad Madman Josephot from Abilene Christian. Uh, oh, no, he's committed to Abilene Christian. He is a high school pitcher, you know. He is quite developed for a high school pitcher, so maybe maybe he turns out to be something. Maybe he doesn't. But that is their second overall pick. We now move things on to our selection, twenty first overall. Best player available is Sean Didana, a first baseman. He does have a good personality class. Looks like he could be a good first baseman. Who does our scout thinks we should take? Sean Didana. Uh, I'm not opposed. I think I might like this guy better, even though he does not have a great personality. Maybe not. I mean, he does give you the possibility to play multiple non-elite positions at a high level, and he's got a good bat profile outlook, it looks like. This guy is interesting because he's got that 80 gap power potential with the really good contact bat, possible power to go with it. And 80 grade speed, really good personality class. He's also just like a first baseman like Dodonna, but I mean, 10 potential is is a lot better. Why is his potential, is he really that much better? Is it because of the eye? I don't understand why this guy is 10 potential higher than this guy. I mean, they both have really good personality. Okay. Well, I think we're just going to go with our, what our scout things here. Unless one of these, like, this college pitcher. Uh, I mean, he looks like he could be good. He looks like he could be good. Who is the best? No, 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 no. Who is the best college player? It's got to be that guy. Yeah, Mike, Mike DeTringo. I mean, he looks like he could be really good. And our pitching staff is getting old to the point where, you know, eventually we're going to be needing some guys to come up the pipeline. And right now we don't really have any immediate replacements aside, aside from Pimentel, who is fragile. So I'm not opposed to taking DeTringle here. DeTringo. And keep in mind, we do have a second round supplemental pick. I wouldn't mind this guy either. So... I think we're going to take the high school guy and then see if DeTringo or Augustine are here for our second round pick. So Dodonna is going to be our first round pick, 21st overall, Sean Dodonna. Boom. We now move things on to round two. And it looks like both of them are, they're both gone. That's just fantastic. Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal. 
Our scat thinks we should take this high school shortstop who's not actually a shortstop. Uh, probably not. Probably not. This guy I don't mind. Big power potential, corner outfielder, adaptability and intelligence. Any, like, standout? I wouldn't take this guy here, but I do like the guy's range. We got the 70 range college shortstop who can also play a really good outfield too i'm kind of tempted kind of tempted to take this guy brendan nolte in in my in my head canon that is nick nolte's great great grandson and the college players are down to 50 potential guys but there are a bunch of 50 potential guys here it's just, do I want the high upside high school guys, or do I want to go for a college guy who can get to the big leagues sooner? Like, among these high school kids, I probably like... I mean, Madrano does have a good bat. He's probably a third baseman, even though he can't play there right now. But he's third base is probably where he ends up. And he does have the bat to end up at third base. So we do like Madrano. Putnam has better personality class. And he's almost 19. He's committed to Rutgers! I mean, I would feel bad about stealing a guy from Rutgers. <laughs> probably still not making the tourney. Probably still never been in uh, in the dance. I think we're going to take Medrano. His his bat is just better than Putnam. Uh, he, can, he can fit at third base. So Medrano is going to be our second round pick here. We move things on to our supplemental round pick. Uh, Putnam did get taken. Who's this guy? Gap power, power. The K's aren't the worst. Big bopper here. We still got some 50 college guys here. Is Yes, Brendan Nolte is still here. I think I'm probably leaning Brendan Nolte. But we'll see. Like this guy's a fifth starter. I don't I don't think we want him. Uh I think Nolte is our guy. This guy's a closer, no thank you. Joey Shule, you know, like he's he's a reliever and he's fragile. Our scat thinks we should take high school corner. Now we're taking Nolte. Brendan Nolte, Nick Nolte's great-great-grandson, is indeed uh, going to be our selection here. We'll just meet his demands, move things on to round three. And that Johnston guy is still here. So you were trying to get me to get screwed out of Nolte there, Scout. But I still think I like this guy better. I think I like Corey Merkling the most. His bat is just the most intriguing with this Babip gap power power profile with some 60 speed. There are some big bopper catchers here, but they're very flawed. We're like, Jeffries is going to strike out 40% of the time. Uh, so is Brad Ray here. He's going to strike out like 45% of the time. I think we're going to take Corey Merkling. He's just the most interesting to me. We're going to take him here round three and move things on to round four. So we have a decent amount of like 50 grade starters with these 60 high school guys. Uh, Archuleta, I don't like because he's fragile. Jeff James is a starter with two pitches and he's impossible aiden milfort is also impossible apparently is from idaho shout out burns uh we just looked at this guy college starters so we have three 50 grade college starters i think i would like to take one of these guys here it's just a matter of which one do we like the best this guy's fragile he's eliminated uh breck Orfer. That is the most college baseball name I've ever heard. College baseball loves having guys with names like this. White white people who have rich rich white people, which is, let's be honest, the demographic of people who play D1 baseball. Uh, they love having kids named stuff like this. I have a tweet up on my, on my account that's something like, college baseball players love being named something like Dirt Jotter. This guy kind of reminds me of Chris Sweet. Where he like he looks like he he should be like a reliever at best, but Chris Sweet has turned into a guy who starts and like I probably like this guy the most. This guy actually I think well, forty stamina. 
compared to 65 stamina. Yeah, Siegel's, Siegel's the better pitcher. So I think we're going to take Damian Siegel here from Akron, Ohio. He's our man. Damian Siegel from J St. John's University. Welcome to the organization. We move things on. The other guy's not there. I would have taken him if he was. And now we're at the point where there's not really any starters available. So we're going to go best all players. Any college guys? College reliever. He is durable, but I'm not going to take a college reliever here. Uh, college bat. No. Let's just go back to best available. Our scat things we should take. Darnell Gravedigger Palamon. If you're a closer and your nickname is Gravedigger, that is that is insane. This guy better be walking out to like the Undertaker theme. I'm not even a wrestling guy, but I even even I know that, that that's what he should be walking out to. But this Johnston guy is still here, and our scat was like, hey, you should take this guy round two. And he's still here round what are we in? Round five. And he's like, no, nah, actually, I think you should take you should take Gravedigger now. I have been looking at this guy, this Brad Bigelow guy, San Diego State. Uh, committed to San Diego State, going across country to play there. 65 outfield range, which is a bit less than you'd like in center. And he's also 65, where his potential center is, is only 50. So he's definitely like a Dylan Carlson type, where he's way better in the corners. Uh, but I like his bat profile. He's got some speed. He's got high adaptability, so I wouldn't be opposed to throw him in the lab to try to improve stuff. Uh, I think he's probably my most liked here he also has the ability to play a decent like second base which i very much like so i think brad bigelow is going to be our selection here we'll take him move things on to round six uh and gravedigger is still here so is johnston and now he's back to being like, hey, you should take Johnston. I guess probably maybe his demand was why he didn't want me to take him. I don't know. Who knows? But uh, I think we are going to take him. He's been saying we should take him. So we're going to take Kevin Johnston. We're going to move things on. Paul Lamont's still here. So we're just going to go ahead and take him. Boom. Welcome to the organization. Move things on round eight. Scat thinks we should take Sam Killian. We still have three green college players here. A catcher who's going to strike at 40% of the time. A reliever who could be interesting. I think I'm tempted to take the college reliever. This bat seems okay too. Honestly, I think I'm leaning reliever because this guy looks like he could be like getting to the big leagues fairly soon and he could be nasty with an 80 grade curveball. Out of Tennessee, this guy's he's not a hard thrower, but he's our curveball Ben Joyce, essentially. So we're going to take him. Boom. Move things on. Mike Frazier's still here. We're not even thinking about it. We're taking him. We move things on. It's round 10, and I think we're going to pick things up at the end of this draft. All right, folks, we have reached the end of the 2036 first-year player draft. We did the, uh, I think we did pick nine and then, yes we did mike frazier we picked nine but then we that's where we left off pick 10 we took josh andre who is a 17 year old high school pitcher from nashua new hampshire he is a high leader high adaptability high work ethic has decent ratings looks like, looks like he could be an interesting starter prospect if he develops uh then we took uh mitch dean who is a corner outfielder from princeton durable has really good personality class. Lefty hitter, corner outfield type. Thought he was worth taking a swing on. Uh, Blankenship is a reliever, college reliever from the very nasty for-profit university. Uh, but he looks like he could be like a fast riser, so we took a swing on him. Uh, Serta is a Ignacio Serta. Incredible look with the curly mustache and everything. Nacho will definitely be... I'll just do that right now. We'll just make his nickname Nacho because his name's Ignacio. That is, of course, what his nickname is. So Nacho Serta here. Big power bat. Can play a decent corner outfield. He's 18 years old. 13th round pick. Um, Sean Beckham is a catcher with 60 framing and 60 blocking. Okay-ish bat. High school guy, you know, catch our prospects. 
Um, Zamorone. Zamorone is a Mexican-American right-handed reliever. Decent outlook to him. Durable durability. Thought that was interesting enough to take a swing on round 15. Round 16, we take this high stuff from Shark River Hills, New Jersey. But he went to high school in Missouri. Uh, big stuff, two-pitch mix. Decent relief prospect to have. Uh, Argo Manez, huge stuff potential on this guy. Does not know where the hell it's going, though. Side armor, 80 grade stuff was enough for me to take a swing in this late in the draft, 17th round. Uh, we've had some success on guys like that before in our organization, so I figured we might as well take a swing. Uh, 18th pick, Joe Prawl. He is fragile, but I just thought this personality class was enough lefty from Willington, Delaware, whatever. Uh, 19th, this is where things get interesting. 19th round pick, he's got good stuff. You're like, all right, he's got some good uh, stamina, got decent stuff, decent control. Knuckleball. Keep an eye on this guy, Billy Justice. Great name, too. Uh, lefty knuckleballer. We'll be keeping an eye on him. And then our 20th round pick is Ben Laverty from the University of Buffalo. We love the Mac. We love Mac Shin. Decent uh, outfielder with some first base capability as well. As you can see, you know, highly doubt he's anything, but he could play some decent defense in our organization for our pitchers down in uh, the low minors.